All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon are down below. For anybody who wants to support me, only do so if you actually can. So we're getting towards the end of the year now, so this will be the final update on the U.S. drought conditions in the southwestern U.S. for this year. Conditions in terms of the present short-term drought have gotten better over much of the affected U.S. You'll see now everything is in much lighter shades, as opposed to the dark reds that it was at in the earlier part of the year and back in summer. However, this obviously does little to correct the long-term situation. Looking first at the two largest reservoirs, those along the Colorado River, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, both are excess storage reservoirs. Their purpose is to release water to flow along the Colorado River in order to shore up its flow whenever it would otherwise not be enough. And it has basically not been enough for the last two or two and a half decades. They have to release extra water constantly to keep the river flow adequate, to supply water to states along the Colorado River, along with to make sure that the water level is adequate at the intake system for the Colorado River Aqueduct, which pipes water from the Colorado River hundreds of miles across the border into California for California to use up. So Lake Mead this year at its height, as most lakes and reservoirs go through cycles uh, across the different seasons of the year, when they get more rainfall or snowmelt, they'll lose water or sometimes regain water. Lake Mead went up to about 1,067 elevation feet. The U.S. Uh, lakes and reservoir system is measured in elevation feet for the elevation of the water surface above sea level. It's not the depth of the lake. For example, with Lake Mead, if it were full, it would be up at 1225 and empty is down at around 890 or so. So Lake Mead went up to about 1067 this year, which was about 33% full in terms of its total storage volume. And at the low point, at the trough of this year, it dropped all the way down to only 1,040 elevation feet, or a bit under 27% full, so a 6% drop in a single year now. And as you can assume from the brightening of the drought map, Decent amounts of precipitation have been received throughout the southwest over the last few months, and that did give some water back to Lake Mead, enough for it to recover during what's normally its flatline season, up to about 1,046 elevation feet. However, from that, it's begun dropping back down again over the last several weeks, now down to 1,044. And the first danger point, the point at which the turbines or the power generation from the dam would have to be shut down, because remember for hydropower, uh, to turn the turbines or with a decent bit of power, the water has to at least go through somewhat of a gravity drop. So the intakes for the turbines are not at the bottom of the dam. They're usually a little ways up. And for Lake Mead, they're at about 950. Further up from Lake Mead is Lake Powell. And Lake Powell this year got down to 35.22, and during its replenishment phase, which usually happens around the middle of the year, it did regain a bit, up to 35.40. And without all the precipitation recently received by the area, it, it would have kept going down at a rate that would have probably taken it back down to 35.22 by the end of this year. However, it looks like it's going to come in a bit above that, as it has... Thus far, as of this moment, only declined down to about 35.29. And this stalling or this delay is enough that the Glen Canyon Dam that holds back Lake Powell might not have to shut down its power generation in the second half of next year. It might get to forestall that until the first half of 2024. Instead, Lake Powell's water level is presently at a elevation feed level of 35.29 and its turbine intakes are at about 3490. Down in Arizona, primarily the Phoenix area, as that's basically where most of the state's population lives, Phoenix is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs, which are measured collectively in a collective percent full across all of them, and they did get decent amounts of rain this year. They'd gotten down to 62% full collectively, and they were able to go back up to 65 or 66 for a little bit, and have since dropped back down to 63. However, they have kept getting off and on rain enough to keep them, enough to keep them at 63. Utah has a similar collective percent full measurement system, and Utah is entering into the trough of the year where it usually flattens out. Before then, as you uh, hit the first several months of the upcoming year, that's when that's when it usually hits the regain phase. 
while last year saw a substantial drop from a high point of 54% full collectively across the state down to a bit under 39, this year during the replenishment phase of the year, it only recovered up to 46.6 and has since now fallen down to and looks to be stalling at about 35% full collectively across the state. And so in a couple months as the water recharge phase of the year starts, We'll see if it can get back up to or past 46.6. And then, of course, over in the big demand state, California. California has a shared reservoir system since a lot of the water is in the northern part of the state. Water from different reservoirs across the state is funneled into an aqueduct system and channeled throughout the state to wherever it's needed. The state's largest reservoir, Lake Shasta, Last year had a mega drop from 980 elevation feet down to 880, and this year during its recharge phase rebounded back up to only 946. However, has not lost as much this year as it did last year, and up to this point in the year has only dropped down to 918, representing percentage-wise a drop from up close to 40% full down to 30.7. Nearby Lake Trinity last year dropped from 2285 all the way down to 2210, and this year rebounded up to about 2234 only, and has since now dropped below 2200 down to 2190 in elevation feet, representing a drop from the 30s down close to 20 at only 21.7% full in terms of its total volume. Lake Orville, after dropping down under 630 last year, rebounded all the way back up to 777 this year. However, it is well on its way back down towards uh, where it got down to last year again, as at the moment it's down to 664 elevation feet, representing a drop from over 50% down to only 28.6% full presently, and getting close again to the level at which the dam will have to stop its power generation as the turbine intakes are located at 640. The New Malone's Reservoir last year dropped from 1,010 all the way down to 920. This year replenished back up to only 940, and has so far dropped all the way down to 875 elevation feet, representing a drop from up in the 30s down to now only 24.4% full. And the last huge one, the San Luis Reservoir, this year got down to a low point of 396, which isn't as low as it got last year, and actually has regained a bit of water level over the last few weeks, up to about 399. The drop this year being one from over 50% full down to now only 25%. Alright, that's it for this one. Like I said, this is the last drought update video for 2022. So monitoring of the drought conditions and reservoir levels in the U.S. Southwest will resume next year. Thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out any of my other stuff. I have way too many episodes about all kinds of stuff you can listen to if you want. Or preferably go subscribe to my Catch channel. Help us get it to a thousand subs before the monetization deadline, which is next month, I believe. PayPal and Patreon are there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.